only five baby quail made it from the brooder box to the grow out pen. I'll tell you all about that here in a few minutes. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name's Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Uh, today I thought I'd address combining your younger quail with your older quail. This is a question I get pretty, pretty frequently on my live broadcasts and on uh, the comments section down below. Uh, people are always asking, you know, when can I move my younger quail in with my older quail? Is three weeks, you know, are they going to do fine? Is, you know, four weeks old, five weeks old, are they going to do fine? Because, you know, when you try to uh, uh, combine adult quail, oftentimes there's a lot of fighting that goes on. In fact, almost always. When you, when you introduce two uh, sets of quail together that aren't familiar with each other when they're adults, they're going to pick on each other, they're going to fight with each other until they kind of establish a pecking order. You know, and that's not really the case whenever you combine your babies in with your older birds. I get really good results with that. Uh, the ones that I moved in here today, and they're all hiding from me. We're going to have to go into the other section and look at them here in a second. They're about two weeks old, and I just put them in here with my older full-grown birds. No problems whatsoever. They've been in here for two days. They're already figuring out where the food is, where the water is. The only thing I've had to do, um, because I use the water cups... Um, is I had to fill the water cups up a couple of times just to make sure they knew where the water was. But they really, they pretty much figure that out anyway. They just kind of watch the other birds and figure out that's where the water is and then they, they go to get that. And they've already figured all that out. They're doing just great. So uh, let's pull you over here. We'll show you them, see what they look like. And, uh, you know, they're moving around in and out. So I'll pull the camera in close. We'll take a look at them and, and see how they're interacting with the adults. All right, I don't know if you can see that or not. I got a stand on one side. You can see the adults moving around. They're really just not paying any attention to the babies. The babies are just hanging out with them. They're all pretty nervous right now because I'm steaming around here. But uh, you know, it's really not a problem at all. All right, so again, you, you can see they just interact just fine. The, the adults don't pick on the babies. They don't seem to notice them at all. They just kind of ignore them. Just kind of let, they let them get in close with them. The babies aren't afraid of the adults at all. So it's it's really not a problem at all. In fact. You know, I always find it really good results whenever you're mixing in your birds to try to mix young birds in before they hit sexual maturity in with your older birds. And they, they just tend to do really, really well. There isn't any kind of picking on them. There isn't any kind of fighting. Uh, once they hit sexual maturity, they're just kind of seen as part of the, the flock and, and they're not really, you know, picked on like other new birds would be if you move them in as their adults. Um, you know, again, that's you know, prior to, to about eight weeks old is about the best time. In fact, probably somewhere around four to five weeks old is about as late as I would want to do that. Uh, those birds are not yet sexually mature. They've got a couple of weeks before they're going to get there. That gives them time to kind of get integrated into the flock before they hit sexual maturity and are kind of seen as a threat or, or something like that from the other birds. These guys are about two weeks old, and the reason I moved them out at two weeks old is because, you know, we're in summertime right now. So the nighttime temperatures aren't getting down below about 65, and that's plenty. These guys are feathered out right now. They can handle 65 degree temperature just fine. Now, if it was in the fall, early spring, where the nighttime lows are dropping down a little bit lower than that, then I'd give them at least another week, probably about three weeks old, maybe even four, uh, before I take the heat lamps off of them and move them outside. Now, as far as combining them with the other birds, that's not a problem. You can do that when they're day old chicks really it's just a matter of keeping them warm enough you know the brooder box uh, the heat lamps on the brooder box keeping them warm up uh, until they're fully feathered out about two weeks old roughly um, again depending on what your nighttime temperatures are hopefully that all kinds of make kind of makes sense so all right so hopefully I've addressed that topic for you guys got that cleared up if it was a question you had um, they do just fine to combine with older birds um, I was hoping that we'd get a shot of them drinking out of the water but I think they're a little nervous right now, um, so they're not uh, they're not drinking right now. So anyway, let me tell you the story about why only five of the birds made it out to the grow out pen. If you know, um, I had about 40 of them in the brooder box in there. Um, I was planning on moving them out to the grow out pens uh, yesterday, and uh, only five of them made it. Unfortunately, they've been doing just great. 
Let me take you in there. We'll show you my setup here. Tell you the story about that. It's my fault, really. Um, I made a mistake, and uh, yeah, we'll tell you how it happened. Okay, so here is the brooder box, and if you notice, you may be able to tell the the bedding is just really messed up, just all kind of clumped up. I've got the sides kind of pulled away here. Um, it just kind of looks like a you know, like a tornado went through here actually, and it was something very similar to that. Honestly, uh, let me get this camera out here. We'll tell you exactly what happened. All right, so here's the story, and like I said, it was my fault. So. Yesterday morning I came out uh, pretty early and decided you know I need to get the yard weeded in mode and I thought I'll do that before it gets hot out because it's summertime it's getting up in the 90s uh, in the afternoon so you know, it was seven o'clock in the morning something like that I got the weed eater out uh, left the uh, left the shed doors open uh, went out here and started weed eating you might be able to tell where this is going so went out there started weed eating uh, came back in got that you know the, got the backyard weed eating moved up to the front yard and started weed eating up there and I remember thinking at the time it's kind of odd you know my dog Max he, he loves to go out there with me whenever I go out to weed eat or go out to mow he usually just follows me around whenever I do that come here Max come here buddy let's see who you're talking about come here come up here yeah that's a good boy I don't know if you can see him on camera here he is he's a good dog he is a good dog he loves to follow me around whenever I'm out there weed eating or mowing um, he gets to run loose with me while I do it and I noticed that while I was weeding in the front yard, he wasn't with me. And I thought, well, maybe he went back inside or something. Who knows? Got all done weed eating. This took me, you know, almost an hour probably uh, to weed eat everything. All done. Come back here to put the weed eater up. And here's Max in the brooder box chasing the baby quail around. He ended up killing pretty much all of them. All but five of them. Um, he just got in there. And he, I mean, he's not a super aggressive dog with him, but boy, he does love to chase things. And that's what he, he was chasing them all around. Um, I got him out of there. Um, he, you know, he just destroyed the brooder box. Probably trampled most of them. Uh, there were about five or six of them that, well, about four or five, four of them, I guess. One of them was still in the brooder box. The other four that were alive were out of the brooder box. They had actually made it out, and they were on the floor of the uh, of the shed here, uh, wandering around trying to hide from him. So I had to scramble to catch them. Got them all caught. Got them all moved out to the grow out pen. All five of them, unfortunately. So a terrible, terrible tragedy. There's about 35 of them or so that, you know, he ended up just killing them, uh, basically. And, uh, you know, again, he's not a super aggressive dog, but he does love to chase things. And uh, he does love to catch things. So he doesn't catch them and then do the typical thing that you see dogs do, catch them, shake them until they're dead. You know, he doesn't do that. He just catches them, then he lets them go and he catches them again. Then he lets them go and he catches them again. And, you know, those baby quail are a little bit fragile. They couldn't handle that, so I uh, ended up losing about 35 of them. So, unfortunate. Um, it's a big waste. Uh, you know, this brooder box was working out really, really well. Um, but, you know, it didn't have a top on it or anything like that. Um, you know, my mistake. I shouldn't have left the shed door open. I should have closed it up. Uh, you live and you learn. So, I am collecting eggs again. Going to start incubating next week. This will be my third time incubating this spring. And I, so far, I've only gotten five baby quail out of it. The first one, I ended up offering up some, well, no, I had a rabbit that I sold, and the lady wanted some quail. And uh, so I had some in the incubator at the time, and I'm getting ready to hatch. And when they hatched, she came and bought them all. So I didn't get anything from that first one. This one had about 35 or 40. They were going to be replacement breeders for my current birds. I only got five out of it. So I'm collecting eggs again. I'm going to be incubating again. And, of course, I incubate a couple, you know, pretty much all the time during the summer anyway. Uh, but it's a little bit disappointing, of course, going through all the effort. Uh, we're already in June, and I've got five baby quail out of the deal. Let's get so. You know, unfortunately, uh, accidents happen, mistakes happen. Living, you learn. I'll learn not to leave the uh, shed door open. I'll let the dog get to the brooder box un uh, unsupervised uh, going forward. So I can't blame him. Um, he's just doing what a dog does. Um, I've got him to where he's almost, you know, whenever I go out to feed the chickens in the mornings, he likes to go out and I go out to move the tractor, he likes to go out there and he'll just run around that tractor and just harass the heck out of the chickens. And I've got him almost broke of that. He, he really doesn't do it too much anymore. Um, I, you know, kind of trained him that that's not the thing you, you need to do. He loses a little bit of impulse control every once in a while and still, you know, jumps at him, gets them all stirred up. But for the most part, he's kind of broke of that. But don't have him broke and jumping in a brooder box and uh, chasing a bunch of baby quail around, unfortunately. So, have to keep an eye on that going forward. Just make sure I don't leave the shed door open. 
Well, hopefully you guys got something out of this video. You learned something from my mistake with leaving the shed door open. And uh, you learned something about how you can combine your baby quail in with your older quail. And it does really, really well. And that's, that's how I recommend you do it most of the time. If you want to combine birds, it's best to get young birds to combine in with your older birds. Um, it's only going to take them a couple of weeks. I mean, these guys are a little over two weeks old right now. So six weeks they'll be laying eggs and they'll be mixed in. You won't be able to tell them apart very well from the... Uh, well, probably a little longer now, but not much longer now. You won't be able to tell them apart from the, the ones that are in there already. And uh, I don't know. They're doing well. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless.